Hi, um, me and Louie are here. We are taking some <laughs> example images for the course. Um, so um, these are gonna be for the metering modes lessons. And I show you how the three different meeting, metering modes um, affect how you meter to zero. And I saw a question on here that um, was like, she metered to zero, she did the AIS system, but all of her images looked really dark. And it's probably because you have the wrong metering mode on your camera. So um, the factory settings, whenever you buy a camera, the factory settings are your metering modes, which are simply what you're telling your camera to look at to measure the light. So there are three, three metering modes. <clears throat> There's center weighted metering, which is the one that I use most often, spot metering, and matrix metering. Very quickly, center weighted metering measures the center of your image. It measures the light that's hitting the center of your image to give you that exposure rating. Spot metering is the um, focal point, wherever your focal point is on the image, that is going to be like the little tiny spot that it tell that it's measuring the light of. So um, basically if I am shooting Louie's eye right here, it's only measuring the light that's hitting this eye. And if in center weighted, if this is, if Louie's whole body's image is the center of the photo is the light that it's reading. So I use center weighted metering. It's a general metering um, mode and it's probably the easiest one to use and get a correct exposure with. The one that your camera comes with is matrix or evaluative metering. It's kind of like the factory settings, but it's honestly the worst one to have whenever you're shooting portraits. Um, and so that's like the number one thing you need to change if you're shooting lots of portraits, like seniors, brides, engagements, couples, families. Like if you are shooting people, I highly suggest to switch to center weighted metering. It's a general meter um, and you're gonna get a better exposure reading on the back of your camera. So the purpose of what I'm doing right now is I'm showing you that I am keeping the same aperture, the same ISO, and I'm only changing my three meter modes to show you how I'm metering each of them to zero to show you the exposure that I'm getting on the back of my camera. So I'm gonna start with matrix metering. Um, it looks like a little window, and I'm going to shoot Louie. And what matrix metering does all right, metering to zero, and we got this reading. Looks fine. Um, on my LCD screen, it looks a little dark for my taste, but it's fine. So now I'm going to switch it to center weighted metering. I'm going to meter to zero, and we're getting a little bit brighter image of Louie. Okay, and then I'm going to change it to spot metering and it's wanting me, I'm like looking at his eye and it's like making me lower my shutter speed quite a bit. And this is the, the brightest of them all. So I use spot metering anytime like I'm like, there's like backlighting because it gives me a better reading as far as exposure. So, um, I think it was Emily Avery who said that she, that she was using the AIS system, but whenever she looked at the back of her camera, anytime she metered to zero, her images were really dark. It might be just because she was on matrix metering or evaluative metering if you're Canon. Um, that metering mode is, is probably the last one you want to use unless you're shooting like landscape or things like that. And the reason is because when you are doing matrix or evaluative metering, it is taking a chunk of the left side. So if, if this is the frame, I don't know if you can see, this was my frame. You can see there's some window coming in through here. So it's gonna take a portion of the window light, a portion of this white pillow, a portion of this dark uh, chair, and then a portion of this side of the chair, and then the focal point. It's gonna take a portion of the focal point, which was on Louis's face. So it's taking 
all of those readings plus the focal point. It's putting it into this like algorithm, averaging it out, and it's going to give you your correct exposure. So, but here's the problem with matrix metering when you have like a mixed color light situation. It's going to take a little bit of this, 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 and just try to figure out your right exposure. And it's usually incorrect. It'll usually look super dark because it's picking up this white window light coming through. And it's like, whoa, like we need to make sure we tone this exposure down. And so we're going to make her meter to zero here. And um, the exposure is going to look really dark on your LCD screen. Or when you meet it to zero, it's gonna look super, super, super bright if you have, let's say, a black dog on a dark chair and you are trying to get correct exposure of the dog, then it's going to be super bright. It's gonna be like, oh, you need extra exposure because it's picking up the dark chair, the black dog, and all the dark stuff around it. So matrix metering is the one that comes in your factory settings on your camera. So that's one that you might need to change if you're doing the AIS system and it's just not like giving you that exposure that looks good to you on the back of your LCD screen. So I use center weighted the most. I use spot metering anytime I need to shoot backlit. So if I'm shooting Louie this way with the light coming through, I want to just read the exposure on Louie's face, which means I'm gonna use spot metering. And what's gonna happen is it's going to only read the exposure in his face, which means the window might be blown out. But if my purpose is to get Louie exposed correctly, I don't care about the window. So that's when I would use spot metering. It's when I just wanna get the, the exposure correct on this one spot. Now, center weighted metering, the reason I use that one, center weighted metering, is because it's good for like on the go shooting. So if you have people moving a lot, if you're at a wedding, if you have an engagement session where you're doing a lot of posing and a lot of walking, and um, if you, if I would have had it on spot, that meter would be going like this because it's reading the spot of the eye and the spot of the hair. If like anybody's moving, you're gonna be constantly moving your meter and it's harder to keep up with to measure exposure. So I stick with center weighted metering for the most of the time and it's just a good general meter for everyday life, on the go, families, weddings, parties, engagement sessions, um, things like that. So um, this is gonna be a full blown out lesson in the course um, where I really kind of like teach you when to use which part, which metering mode and why you need to use that metering mode to get the best in camera results. So hope that helps a little bit. Um, let's see if I have any questions, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. Um, I sold one of my lenses, so I'm about to go mail that off to Florida. Um, I sold one of those today, so I'm going to the post office. And then I bought a little camera holder, camera phone holder doohickey for my car. So I'm gonna be doing our Q&A lives on the way to pick up the kids to kind of maximize my time to do that. Um, so I won't be able to kind of see your comments in because I'll be driving, but once I get there, I'll kind of see if there's any questions or comments and then I can address those once I get to the parking lot. Um, but yeah, so I hope that helps you have any questions about those metering modes and how you can get a better exposure in camera. Let me know. So I will talk to y'all in maybe 15 minutes doing Q and A.